Well, first of all, I'm, I'm surprised and extraordinarily honoured, and I take it as a, uh, I don't take it terribly personally, I take it as a tribute to, to my colleagues with whom I've had the pleasure of working for the last 25 years. I think that's really difficult. Uh, there have been a number of really extraordinarily exciting moments when you see the phase two data and you say, my goodness, here we are seven years later and we're actually curing patients here, or at least saving lives. And there have been a number of those, so I won't go into that. I think another of the really important moments was the approval of the Innovative uh, Medicines Initiative, which was 28 pharmaceutical companies with the support of all of the uh, CEOs, full support of the R&D heads, and basically a two billion dollar, sorry, two billion euro budget in kind contribution for the industry, half from commission, that really brought together academics, regulators, industry in a completely different way, in a completely different space to have the kind of discussions we need to be able to move our industry forward. I was really proud of that and, and very grateful for all of the work that went in across Europe and the states to get that to work. I think it's very clear the medicines we're creating do not have the efficacy that our patient, that patients and doctors and payers require. Now that's clear. And the reason we're not able to do that is, sim is because we've been so successful in the past. There are over 7,500 7, medicines on the formulary. So most of the time when we come up with a new medicine, somebody says, well, that's rather like a generic. Why should I pay you? And even if they don't say that, they say, well, I'm not paying you 10 times more than I'm accustomed to paying for medicines. The way out of this is for us to create therapies that are extraordinarily efficacious. I would say 